He's got a win. Just run a little too far. One. I think even just the choice of that shot there is a statement of intent from Stewart. Peter Lyons go way back. They first played each other 19 years ago in a pro eight. event, the Irish Masters qualifying. Bingham's won six of the eight meetings. Nine. This time they played was three years ago at the Indian Open. He's a heavy scorer when he's at his best. He's had over 500 centuries. He's had nine maximums. So if he could find that sort of range, then obviously he's going to take some stopping tonight. But it wasn't there this morning. 16. You, you talked about the head-to-head -head as well, Dave. Did the I'm a, It's going back a long time. Did they play each other in the final of the English amateur? I think they 17. possibly did. But anyway, that's a long time ago. If 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 if, it, if they did. Well, I'll double check that. Uh, Rod. Twenty-four. He did win it, didn't he, Stuart? In. Uh, 1996. Started off playing very well here. He's um, 25. Got the balls open now. You're quite right. It was 8 4 to Bingham against Lyons in that final. Yeah, he looks purposeful here, doesn't he? Gone on the front foot, gone on the attack, trying to. Play the sort of snooker that we all know can. But, uh, well, dare I say it's all reds and blacks. 33. I said to him earlier, we were chatting upstairs, and I said, you know, nine maximums is great, but to get into double figures for maximums, to make 10, that would be something. Well, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> this could be the moment. Yeah. And you never know, but at some point in his career, you would expect it to happen anyway, being on nine already. Hopefully, um, 40. Hopefully, it's here. Certainly, a good chance, Dave. Imagine if we had three maximums in three days, because of course, we had two 41. qualifiers at the weekend Zhang Ander and Hussein Vafai, who's playing now on table two. language looks good 48 yeah. so he does have a red into the greens pocket and also a drop in red so is the one to the center maybe Has a lovely touch in the ball, Stuart. You know, really does. Scores so, so heavy. Fifty-six.
think he still has though, Redden to the centre. 64. 65. So he's a couple of balls from securing the frame. Dreaded miscue. Stuart Bingham. Of all the things that could have happened there, that was probably last on the list, really, of what you would have predicted. And the frame isn't over yet. Not enough in front. Plenty still there. What an extraordinary thing to happen. Yeah, you don't see that very often. I had a smile on Stewart's face as well. You could see it was a good chance as well. That's the thing. I think in any situation, any match, Stuart Bingham would love to make a maximum. He would try for it. He would try and stay on the black. He's a pure snooker man. It means a lot to him to be making a living from snooker and to be playing at the highest level and entertaining people. But the good news is Peter Lyons has not punished him. One. That's just quality, isn't it? Really is. So no maximum, but looks like he's after all going to secure the frame. He already looks a different man to the one we saw first up. Yeah, he's definitely come out with more purpose, hasn't he? And um, four. I made the comment earlier on about sometimes you're better off playing this top seed in in the first match of the day. Um, and Stuart looks like he's got a lot of purpose now for the rest of this match. Yeah, he knows that Peter Lyons is one of the more sort of defensive players, so he will look to be the other way. He doesn't get, want to get dragged into that game. He wants to play to his own strengths, which is to attack. That's so what he's done okay. The miscue stopped him in his tracks, but potted a great red to get back in. And this first frame will be his, surely. Twenty four. So the miscue was night. a rather unfortunate moment. Stopped any chance at the maximum, but Stuart Bingham overall is looking good already here this evening. Might just do a little bit of work on his tip. Main thing is he leads 1-0. breaks he's on the brink 101 for O'Sullivan he's got a frame on the board look mighty good in doing it 
What a way to open your account for the season. I get the feeling it will not be his last trophy this campaign. excited weren't we for the maximum but this is what happened a very sort of strange miscue at least he could smile about it just uh, one of those things but the good news is he got in again and did win the frame the tip seems to be Second okay frame. Peter lines to break so already looking better fettled than earlier on when of course he lost 3-0 to Peter Devlin Peter Lyons, another of the, the game's great stalwarts, really. He got on, back on through the Q School last year and loves snooker. Of course, he's based at the Northern in Leeds, where he's sort of a bit of a mentor figure to a lot of the younger players, including, of course, his own son, Oliver. We were just talking about that, Dave, uh, backstage, and he tries to help out with a couple of coaching sessions and stuff like that, helping the younger players. Quite honestly, they could, uh, you know, do them the world of good to listen to the, the advice off the likes of Peter. Some of the young players think there's only one way of playing this game. <laughs> Wow, I mean, on the on the way, you think I can't reach, but it's fast cloths. They do. And today we're experiencing, obviously, one of the hottest days of the year. And who's to say that hasn't got a part to play in the pace of the table as well? this table is definitely playing quick today there you are well that is obviously there because of the temperatures outside hottest day ever in the UK so not quite true to say fans are not allowed in the championship league <laughs> Playing that again. Peter Lyons for. Brendan Moore in charge here. He did actually mm -hmm. briefly back. experiment right, with glasses it. after the World Championship, but he, he just found it didn't quite work for him. Yeah. He got a pair of the sort of Dennis Taylor specs made. Compensated, but I'm not sure there's been that much damage done, really. It's hard to see from this angle, but it looks like the clip in to the middle pocket is still on. Maybe the red at the back of the pack's more suitable. 
Well, meanwhile, Hussain Vafai looks like he's wrapping up victory over on Yi of Hong Kong. 3 0. Looks like, well, snooker's required there. Otherwise, 3 0. And that means that he's level with Tian Peng Fei on six points, but Vafai hasn't lost any frames. Tian has lost one. So when they go into the head to head, Vafai will only need a draw. That remains the case. That was the red that I thought Peter might have been what? interested in, Dave. It looked like it was uh, possibly on. But anyway, no, Stuart uh, made a good red. Yeah, it was a very similar shot to the one Peter Lyons had. Bingham, just in the pace of play and the general body language, he's clearly determined Eight. to pose himself now, do the heavy hitting that he's known for. And that's the fascinating thing, I think, about snooker. What, whatever style your opponent has, whether they're an all-out attacking player, whether they're a defensive player, if you're at the table, it doesn't matter. <laughs> they're sat watching. It's up to you when you're at the table to try and do the business yourself. It's very unusual as a sport in that regard. Yeah, it's a unique sport in that way, isn't it? When you're, you're sort of... It's your turn and you take the power of uh, your opponent's reply away don't you in that sense yeah in tennis you can't get away from the fact that Roger Federer is on the other side of the net <laughs> but in Seven. snooker it can be Ronnie O'Sullivan sat in the chair as long as he's in the chair he can't do anything to you other than completely intimidate you one thing I'll say though they're nice chairs here at the <laughs> Championship League aren't they Peter's looking like he's getting a bit low in that chair Ooh, well, he'll be getting out of it now. That yeah. was a surprise. And he's left with a good he's left with a good chance as well. So this is uh, Peter's sort of first good chance to impose himself here. Been a strange day, hasn't it? You know, where every now and again there's just been a a missed ball that you what? wouldn't expect. Yeah, just as it was looking good for him again. Sort of came out of nowhere, really. Now, can Peter Lyons put something substantial together? Not necessarily sort of thought about as one of the big break builders. But that's not to Seven. say he can't make the breaks. Eight. I think he's got a favourable angle on the blue, but he definitely needs the black on its spot as quickly as possible, Peter. I think he was playing for the block there. Well, that's gone wrong, and um, he was definitely playing for the black, but he's overscrewed that by another couple of foot again. Peter Lines. A bit 40. disappointed with that visit there, Dave. Yeah, like you say, just lost his way. Having to settle for the snooker, the uh, conditions catching him out a bit. Foul, and miss. Peter Lines for. to come off three cushions here and leave come into the the wide part of the pack the safe part of the pack but thank you it's still going to take some play in this not 
quite intended, but the result's good. That's a good target by the yellow and brown, and that's what he's obviously trying to do here. Like he's played the shot. Played the shot really well. Yes, as I say, he didn't particularly want it to turn into a safety game, but he does have that side as well when he needs it. I think as long as balls aren't going on cushions and things are going too scrappy, it's okay. Foul. I miss. Bingham four. Now then, they're still going next door, and as you can see, Hussain Vafai is about to win after all. Onye did her best to get the snookers. But Hussain Vafai, well, he made a max from yesterday in the European Masters qualifying. He won the shootout here in Leicester last season, so there's something about this venue that seems to suit him, and he goes into his last match with Tian Peng Fei, needing just a draw because he has superior frames difference. Wow, the miss. <laughs> That's incredible, isn't it? Four. I thought he might have just got there, but Brendan Moore right on the case. Hasn't quite... It's, we're talking a couple of millimetres here, aren't we? Well, Brendan's eyesight's better than ours. Yeah, he just didn't quite make it. And he's got a favourable angle here. He'll want to play this pot. Possibly out for the pink or blue. Black would be a good positional shot. I think we're talking about four or five cushions if he chose to play the black. Eight. I'm wrong. Stewart's intention there was to get the black on its spot and get back into a good scoring position. Position's gone wrong for him, but you could see why he chose the black and not the blue.
Very good. This is close. Seven. Well, you don't need to be the world's biggest body language expert to work out he's not happy with that. Slow trudge around the table. So again, just fractions. bottom red of the two definitely looks like it's the one that he could play Dave and I think at this stage of the match I think he'd be best playing it as well trying to be positive seems reluctant to look at it but I think he might have missed the trick there Peter line set at least because he got a ball over a pocket, you know. Green might have been available, whatever there, had he potted the red, but uh, ran for cover. In a few key moments today, Peter's definitely had a tough run of the ball. Sometimes you've just got to force your, your will on the game, haven't you? time he's taken it on but he's missed he's left an immediate chance for Bingham I actually preferred the last red that he never played compared to that because obviously he had to pot that but obviously Peter's seen a difference one well let's see it costs him that's what he'll be concerned about Bingham already the, a small lead here, 11 with the pink. So, even if he potted four reds, four blacks, that's 43 the lead. Seven. With 43 on. Would still need one of the reds on the left hand side. Eight. He's just doing the maths now, working out. If he was to get to the last two reds, they do look set for a plan towards the black's pocket. They're definitely not perfectly in line, but he could maybe uh, try and make that plant 23. if he got that far in the frame. But anyway, two reds and blacks is what he'll be after first. Stuart Bingham, 23. Well, this shot kind of sums up his day in a way. You'd expect him to get that, certainly. He expected to get it. It stays out. One. Well, he's played the more attacking shot to try and get those reds into play. It's kind of run a little bit safe, that red. But the intent was there. I 
I wonder whether he'll look at the red next to the white because he's dropped really nice on that. He's just coming round to look at it now. He's dropped really nice where the green is as well. I think it's worth looking at this red. Lines five. He could have played it in such a way as well to have left the pink across table to move the other red if he'd have brought the white back just a couple of inches. I know he would have been leaving the red below the pink, but I think that might have been uh, giving the pot more of a chance to drop. Just hampered here. Yeah, he's got to watch himself with the old... Uh T-shirt, logo, very close to the green. Brendan keeping a close watch. But he knocks it in all the same. One. That was a better pot than it looked with the extension on the end of the queue, so... He's on the red, literally, though. That's the problem. Not to pot it. Four. He's keeping it together a bit, Stuart, but he looks a bit frustrated, doesn't he? I think especially after yesterday when he won in the qualifying and seemed to play well. Stuart Bingham, four. It's fair to say other results, to a degree, have gone his way. The two draws that followed his defeat at least have kept him very much in the running. Another chance then, both reds in open play, so this is his chance for 2-0. One. Not at his brilliant best, Bingham, but he seems to be potting the crunch balls. Of course, he made that uh, 65 in the first frame that ended with a miscue. Now he needs this red, should be 2-0. Eight. Nine. So if you're just joining us, Stuart Bingham lost his first match to Peter Devlin. Devlin has since drawn with Chao Yupeng and he plays Peter Lyons next. If Devlin wins that match, he's won the group. But if he doesn't, then the chance is there for Bingham if he wins this match. When he plays Chao Yupeng, he can Seven. still win the group despite having lost 3-0. So not the cleanest frame, but 
Stuart oh. Bingham has won it, and as I say, he needs one more to record his first victory of the day. So Peter Lyons trails 2-0 here against Stuart Bingham. And uh, well, he's not looked that uh, <laughs> pleased with the way it's gone so far. He's had chances, but it's been from his perspective, Third all break. bits and pieces, really. Stuart Bingham to break. He's making the breaks. Of course, in his first match, he was 2-0 up against Chao Yipeng. That ended in a draw. It's worth reiterating, of course, that if you finish last, you don't get any money and any ranking points. So that's... One place where he doesn't want to be tonight. If he were to lose this match, then clearly he's got to get something out of the last one against Devlin to avoid that fate. It's definitely worth Peter attacking the balls now, though. He's 2 0 down, two frames to play. He may as well throw a bit of caution and start attacking the balls and see if he can get something going. One. Six. When you're faced with a red like this and you've got a cannon into other reds, you always just want a shot at the black. So, you know, he's twixt between screwing her in or topping her in, he's going to screw her in. And the reason why he played that, he thought he was definitely going to leave some sort of angle on the black. And if you top them in, sometimes you're not in control of the white, but the pace of the table again has caught him out. But I can understand why he chose to play it that way. Well, it's a very bold shot he's played on the pink. 13. The statement of intent from Stuart Bingham. <coughs> Be unfortunate if you can't see a red here. The other thing about snooker, sometimes you get no reward for playing a really good shot. Other times you can butcher the shot and somehow get lucky. Bingham, I couldn't have been any closer, but you get the feeling that Peter's going to have to take this chance now. We saw even just in his seat, waiting for the frame to start, he didn't exactly look full of confidence. And 
guess that's not a shot he kind of needed at that point with the rest. He didn't get too close. So Bingham hand on table with another red to go at here. But uh, it's not there. Yeah, it doesn't look an obvious red for Peter to play, but I'd like to see him play in the red and the greens pocket here. He could run the white through to the middle pocket. Could have played the red into the greens pocket and left the white by the middle pocket with a little bit of insurance, but... Surprised by that choice of shot there. I think Pingham will feel, you know, he should win, and probably 3-0, but until it actually happens, there's always a chance that it won't happen. He's getting quite a few chances to get in, but not quite happening. And again, Peter's being left a really tricky starter if he chose to play it, so... He's not only back against the wall, he's also getting a bit of a tough run of the ball today, definitely. Cue the cross start there, so good start for Stewart and Peter's uh, disappointed with that effort. One. Yes, he struggled in this match. And uh, Stuart Bingham long last gets the opening he's looking for. Can put this away, obviously then the next match is out of his hands. Lines against Devlin, he needs Peter Lines to either win or draw that match. If Peter Devlin wins, then Bingham, whatever happens in the last match, can't win the group. But Devlin doesn't win, then despite that 3-0 defeat this morning, he has a chance to still win the group. Six. Seven. Yeah, Stuart's going to rely on Peter to put a much you know improved performance in really in the next match. Eight. Eight. 
that's the thing when you lose your opener you're relying on other results but this looks like um, a real good chance now to finish this match I suppose the other dynamic though in the match that's going to come next is of course Peter Devlin will be aware of the situation as well so he's uh, come in as the fourth seed he wasn't even expecting to play he was on a holiday last week hadn't been practising suddenly he's in with a chance to win the group so will that inspire him will it put pressure on him will it affect how he plays we'll find out shortly sure we'll see all three <laughs> yeah we normally do in this game Ninety. Yeah, it's pink. I'm not sure it's holding its line, but it went in. Twenty. One thing Stuart Bingham always has is enthusiasm to play snooker, even if he's had a bad result as he did earlier on. It's okay. Let's get on with the next match. And he did come out showing a lot of purpose at the start of this one. Determined to 26. go on the attack, determined to try and dominate. It's not been all big breaks by any means, but 27. he's looked the better player by far. And it's just a question of finishing it off now. How are you enjoying the commentary box, Rod? It's an easier game from here, isn't it, than when yeah, you're down Yeah, I, I haven't missed one today. Um, no, I've really enjoyed the, the day so far, and it's uh, been really good to work with you as well, Dave. Uh, I've enjoyed it. Um, yeah, and it's not easy, you know, watching them go through the pain. It's nice to come to a venue without uh, having to worry about my own result for a change. But no, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And, um, and it's not easy, is it, to sort of uh, try and sum up what's happening out there, you know. I was only just thinking then, you know, Stuart's strongest part of his game is scoring. And it's almost like the last thing that leaves him, isn't it, you know. And we've sort of got a glimpse of that in this match where, you know, He's sort of looking like having two one visits in the three frames, and he's sort of that type of player. It's just the strength. 34. Nice asset to have, Dave. Definitely, yeah. It's uh, always been a strong point of his. So, needs to mind his work here. And it means the group is set for a very interesting finish. It's over to Peter Devlin now to try and beat Peter Lyons if he does he's won the group if he doesn't 40 down to the last match Bingham still with the chance against Chow Yu Ping 47. 48. So, barring snookers, this black is match ball. Just wondering which red he'll play for here. He's got a choice, as really, but may play for the red in the middle pocket. He did play for that red in the middle, but I think he's going to have to take it into the top pocket now. But 55. 68 ahead, 67 on. 48. You'd expect it to be enough. Stuart Bingham, 55. Just wanted that end, didn't he, for the, the extra security. So not quite over yet, but he's on the brink. Sort of sums up how it's been going for Peter in the last couple of frames. Eight. One. 
Nein. Well, this has to go in, this pink, otherwise, surely, like Anne's time. Yeah, it's gone in. In a funny type of way, Dave, when he's actually being forced to play shots, he's played them okay. He potted the a red in, in the last frame, or the, maybe the second frame, which he had to make. 60. If he can take this mindset into his last game, I'm sure he'll play uh, play much better if he doesn't go on to to win this frame, obviously. But it's going to go down to the last uh, stages, that's for sure. So fair, fair play to Peter, keeping the frame alive. 23. 24. I think because the red's so close to the yellow pocket, I think he'd be better off trying to pot it. Hasn't gone intended. 31. But he needs a red and a pink, or red and a black, and one snooker. Peter Lines, 31. Yeah, and Bingham, I mean, Rod mentioned the, the English amateur final, that was uh, nearly 30 years ago. He knows that Peter Lyons has got all the experience in the world and this is a sort of situation where you know you could see him getting a good snooker Not so good, yes, and you can see, not so happy. So if Bingham can put the red away, then he's won 3 0 for sure. Yeah, it's not been the cleanest win, but he's coming to the match looking for the victory, and that's what he's got. So he's hoping now that Lines can do him a favour against Devlin win at least two frames and then it all comes down to whether Bingham can beat Chai Peng later yeah he's beaten his opponent 3-0 and he's hoping that he can do him a favour in the next match welcome to the uh, championship league Ten. well of course Lines needs something to avoid finishing last as well so every motivation for him but it's Stuart Bingham who puts himself back in contention in this group having lost 3-0 in his first match he's won 3-0 in his second he's hoping it comes down to the last but Peter Lyons stays on now to play Peter Devlin of course if Devlin wins he's the group winner